Hi everyone! Last year, we started planning what to fix in Go2. In our annual Go user survey, you all made your top three requests very clear. You want better package management, better error handling, and generics. I wanted to give you a short update about all three of those. But first, let me remind you how Go changes happen. The process begins with all of us using Go. Someone identifies a problem and writes it down, probably as an experience report. People suggest various solutions, which we all discuss, leading to a decision about which one to implement, evaluate, refine, and eventually ship. At any step, we might realize we made a mistake, backtrack, and try something different. The focus for last year was package management, meaning excellent support for working with programs built from many pieces written by many teams. Go 111 introduces the Go module, which is a group of related Go packages versioned as a unit. Modules record precise dependency requirements, leading to reproducible, verifiable builds. Modules also enable working outside GoPath so that Go programmers can write code in any directory they like. But Go module support isn't done. In terms of the change cycle, it's around step four. There's a solid design and initial implementation, but modules are still an opt-in feature. Experience with the next couple releases will help us revise the design and implementation. It will also take another year or two for the entire ecosystem to adjust to modules. At that point, GoPath and the old GoGet will have served us well in our first decade of Go. Go modules should serve us well for the next decade. Now, work on modules continues, but I also want to talk about error handling and generics. These are back on step two. The problem is clear, and there are many possible solutions. More thought and community discussion is needed to decide which one to adopt. Recently, we published preliminary draft designs. We hope all of you will help us improve them and turn them into Go proposals. So let's talk error handling. Today, Go code often looks like this. One problem with this code is obvious. There's too much error checking boilerplate. But another problem is less obvious. There's not enough precise error reporting. A function should include relevant information about its parameters in the errors it returns like os.open, including the name of the file that could not be opened. So really, the code should look more like this. But proper error reporting only adds to the boilerplate repetition, so most programmers don't bother. The basic idea we're exploring with error handling is to add a check expression to shorten error checks but keep them explicit. A new handle statement defines what to do when a check fails. Now it's easy to add precise error reporting in a single place. We also need to explore whether to define additional standard interfaces that error values might satisfy. But instead, let's talk about generics. This function filters repeated items from a channel of strings. The code is all about strings, and yet not about strings at all. What if the channel carries a different type? We have to copy and paste the code. What we'd all prefer is to make the channel element type a parameter that can vary, like this. One difficult question now is how to specify which types can stand in for t. In this case, the comparison v not equal next means that t must be comparable, like interstring, but not func or map. If this requirement is only inferred from the implementation, it's unclear to the caller of unique, and it's too easy to change requirements accidentally. Just like a function declares what kind of values it can be called with, it must also be able to declare what kinds of types it can be called with. In the current draft design, a contract defines the operations that types must support. For example, here is a contract named equal, declaring that two values of type T can be compared for equality. Unique can use the equal contract to declare which types T it accepts. A contract ensures that the implementation doesn't add new requirements, and it ensures that callers only provide types satisfying those requirements. This lets the implementation and the callers safely evolve independently. That's all I have time to show you today, but all the details are at golang.org slash s as in short slash go to designs. As I mentioned last year, go to is not going to be a single release, so much as a sequence of releases adding features as they are ready. I hope all of you will help us get them ready by writing experience reports and sending feedback about the designs. The webpage has more information about how to do that. Thanks very much and have fun at GopherCon.